And so they wake up Willie Jet, and he takes them to the Garrett farm. And Jet is praying that Booth and Harold are still there because the Union already went by. And if they're not there, he's in big trouble. So uh, early morning hours around 4 a.m., the, the 16th New York um, surrounds the house. They wake up Mr. Garrett, who, as I said, is feverish. He's confused. He does not know where Booth and Harold are. Um, and the 16th New York never actually say Booth and Harold at that time. They say, we want the man with the broken leg. The Garretts still have no idea who this man is or what he has done. Uh, Mr. Garrett is confused. Luckily, Jack Garrett wakes up from the corn crib, comes and says, I think I know who you want. They're in the tobacco barn. And the 16th New York go and surround the barn. It will actually take a few hours of parlay with Booth inside, him wanting a, a chance to come out shooting. And they say, no, we don't want that. We want you to come out, give yourself up. Um, finally, the Union detectives are tired of waiting. They have the Garretts put kindling next to their own barn, which I think is a very big insult. Um, and then they say, we're going to light the barn on fire. Harold surrenders himself, comes out of the barn, and Booth says, well, I'm not giving up. And he keeps all the guns with him. He's got a Spencer carbine. He's got his pistols. And finally, they light the barn on fire. Booth drops his crutches, gets his weapons. He starts hopping toward the door. He tries to flip over a table to put out the fire, but he can't. He's hopping toward the door when one of the members of the 16th New York, a sergeant by the name of Boston Corbett, uh, kind of takes matters in his own hands. He can see Booth between the slats in the tobacco barn. He takes out his pistol and he aims and he fires. He hits Booth, not center mass, but actually through the back of the neck. It goes through his third, fourth, and fifth cervical vertebrae, instantly paralyzing Booth. He collapsed to the ground of the barn. The soldiers unlock it, run in, grab Booth, and pull him out. They will put him on the porch of the Garrett house, which is the median strip of 301, and they will call for a doctor. They send all the way to Port Royal to Dr. Urquhart, wake him up, and they drag him all the way back there. Booth actually survives a few hours. Even though he's, he's paralyzed, he can still breathe, but it's very difficult. He can barely talk above a whisper. Um, they put brandy uh, on, his, uh, on a handkerchief and try to wet his lips and get him to drink. It is only while he is laying dying on the Garrett farm, on the Garrett house, that the Garretts are finally told who he is. Because they say, why have you shot this man? Why have you destroyed our barn to get him? And Boston Corbett, the same guy who shot him, takes out a little CDV image of Booth that all the detectives had and looked on the lookout. And they say, is this the man that we have shot? And the Garretts say, yes, of course, that's the man you, you have shot in our barn. Who is he? And Boston Corbett says, this is John Wilkes Booth, the assassin of President Lincoln. And that is the first time that the Garretts learn who this man is and what he has done. And uh, Booth will kind of go in and out of consciousness. He can barely talk above a whisper, but when he does, he tells the detectives, tell mother I died for my country. I did what I thought was best. And his last words, as uh, it's almost about sunrise on April 20, 26, he asked to see his hands. So the Union detectives actually raise his hands up to his face so he can see them. And he is alleged to have said, useless, useless. He will lose consciousness, and then he will die, uh, like I said, right around sunrise, April 26, 1865, 26 years of age, at the Garrett farm. The Union soldiers take his body, wrap it in an army blanket, put it in a wagon, bring him right back down here. They cross over a few people at a time, including Booth's body and Harold, who is now under arrest. Willie Jett also comes with them, and William Rollins comes too. The Garrett's, two of the Garrett's sons, Jack and Will, are also arrested. They take everyone they can, and they will take the body back up to Washington.